All right, let's see what's going on here now. Hmm. I actually know a few of these, actually. All right, let's give it a go. You know, I'm a young gun. Okay, simple as that. I was born in the 90s, okay? So mostly I only watch WWF, a little bit of WCW influenced by my family. And here we are in 2019 with so much wrestling now with all the glitz and the glamour and the pyro and the sex and the music. But then this little thing came in. A throwback, per se. And I have become to really enjoy it with his presentation and overall his professional wrestling. It started back for me in the Crockett Cup. But then, of course, I learned from one of the pioneers that I followed it for a much longer time. And I have huge respect for it. Good old J.M. Jeff Meacham. And then I find out that this series now called NWA Power comes on. And it brings me into wrestling as a whole different type of fan. And now they're doing the first ever pay-per-view after a season of nine episodes. I'm actually looking forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Sip and Predict a Wrestling video on NWA Into the Fire. Hello everybody. Well, I'm just a simple man. And my name is Noah Foster and welcome to another Sipling Prediction Wrestling video where today I will be throwing my thoughts and predictions for NWA Into the Fire. The first pay-per-view under NWA Power, er, 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 uh, era I guess you could per se, emanating from GBD Studios in Atlanta, Georgia, and it is sold out. Congratulations to them. I have really been enjoying this product that uh, Dan Ga Joe Garley has led through uh, commentary and that Billy Corgan has brought and I've watched it every week, live on YouTube, I've tweeted about it, and I've definitely recognized some of the names, and I've learned some new favorites. With that, I'm just going to give you my brief thoughts on this simple period, per se. I guess in the old school days, with studio wrestling, you didn't have, like, pyro, big screens, and music, and all that type of jazz, and it just focused down the wrestling. You really didn't need a whole lot to it, because here we are, and there's only six matches on this thing. And yes, I have already bought it. I cannot wait to watch it. Maybe I'll even do a review afterwards. But maybe I'll leave that to um, the experts. But I digress. What do I know, right? Let's see if I can actually guess the show. So, our first match is Allison Kay and Ashley Vox versus two members of Melina's team. Give you a little bit of background here. Allison Kay, you should know as Sienna from Impact Wrestling. She is currently, right now, NWA Women's Champion. I like this throwback on the title, too, where they have the champion's picture in the middle, and not so much a name, and the whole silver and white. It's a very nice contract. One of the better-looking titles I've seen for a Women's Championship, I have to say. And then I have Ashley Vox here, who I've come to know now through NWA Power, her, her, her. And seeing her debut in action, and her being mutual friends with Kay as well, and Kay being very supportive, only wanting to grow this division, and want the best competition possible. And then here comes a veteran of the game, Funda Rosa, who has been through Lucha Underground and so much more stuff, and even fought in the Octagon. And Marty Bell, who of course was a former member of the Dawson Impact Wrestling. And then you have the veteran that comes into play here, after these two, you know, kind of tag up on Alice and Kay. And the only real music you hear is just drums, per se. Melina! I haven't seen Melina since freaking Lucha Underground, are you kidding me? And now she's in NWA power to try and prove a point. But Allison K believes that she's just pompous, full of talk. And she was ready to fight her even with no shoes on, by the way. But of course Melina was not. So right now, there's a numbers game here, but it's supposed to be 2-1-2. Two, two. I'm very interested in how they're going to handle this match, because right now I don't know the two for Melina's team. It's still unknown. It could be Melina, who finally has her in-ring debut. It could be just Thunder Rose and Marty Bell, who have both already tagged. I'm not sure. It might even be an oddball duel of Thunder Rosa and Melina, who probably have more experience than Marty Bell put together. But with that being said, let me figure it out like this. As in case the champion, you're going to set up your women's champion for a contender after the show. I can see that as we head towards Season 2 of NWA Power. And then I look at actually Vox, who has impressed Allison K as probably one of her only friends really there. Keep it simple, though. I feel like here, because right now, you need to really bring something towards the championship. I'm going to say that if Melina's not involved, that Allison K's team win. But... I'm not going to be that skeptical or that, like, oddball or loophole. I'm just going to go straight out like it is. I believe the team is going to be Melina and Thunder Rosa versus Allison K and Ashley Vox. And if that is the situation, and that's what I'm going to go off of, I am just going to simply say that Melina's team wins. I'm just going to go with 
in my circumstance, lean teams win. But regardless, I'm just going to say lean teams win. Keep it simple. There's too many wild cards when you think about three way or the two. Free bro is real if you could think about it like that. And right now, I can see Allison K needing some competition. So, you put someone over the champ or actually Vox takes the fall. I got to go with Melina and her crew on this one. With that being said, our next match is Trevor Murdoff, a veteran I know very well from WWE. I remember him and the yeah, there was a very fun tag team. And then we have this guy called The Question Mark, who is probably the most popular guy right now in the NWA. Who the hell are you? I thought you were Sid Vicious, as someone told me, but then I see Sid Vicious in an elevator. Then someone says Stan Hansen with that stance and that wicked lariat that he throws. But then he does karate. And he's running with the freaking former... Damian Mizdow, Aaron Stevens, who right now is taking all the adulation from the question mark. It's literally a, a opposite contrast of how he was in WWE. And right now, question mark is undefeated. But Trevor Murdoch says he's willing to do anything he can to prove why he belongs in the NWA. But I'm just going to say right now, I cannot go against this guy because I like him too. I gotta say the question mark wins here. Will he be on mass? Will we finally learn who the question mark is? Highly unlikely in all likelihood. Especially with him running with Aaron now. Speaking of which, duly, that's annoying. Let's just go ahead and talk about that right quick. Okay, I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I could put the time matches in order because there's three of them, but no, nah, I'm going to mix it up. Triple threat match for the NWA National Championship. The current champ recently won, boom, boom, Cucabana, who recently won it back from James Storm, versus an upper-comer in NWA, Ricky Starks, who has very impressed me with both his in-ring uh, presentation as well as attitude and mic skills, per se. He gives pretty good promos. I'll give him credit. And then you have the guy who's been a foreign inside, who he's beat multiple times, but thanks for the question mark's help, he's now in this match. He seems to only get through with his talking, but I can't argue with his character work. It annoys me, so it must be working. Bravo, you friggin' actor. Aaron Stevens. I almost called him Aaron Rex. Excuse me. This guy's no stranger to gold. He held the Impact Grand Championship when that was a freaking thing. Thanks to freaking towel covered in chloroform and freaking bandaged knuckles with rings. There's no doubt his scarf who's coming to play recently will probably come into play here. And it's triple threat rules. The champ does not have to be pinned to lose the title. Coca Banna, of course, he has worked in between all sorts of promotions. NJPW, NWA, and of course, at home front, Ring of Honor. Because he's freaking commentary there. And it's because of that reason that I feel like right here, he doesn't really need the title. He's going to drop it. And as much as I don't want to say it, I feel like right now that Aaron Stevens might actually win this. So I'm going to go with him for the win. Oh, Zay. Him as champion? I'll never hear the end of it. And I will look at him. I don't care what he says. All right, let's go to this one because I know both these two very well. And I'm very excited for this. Eli Drake versus Mr. Anderson! Anderson! Where do I begin? Both of these former Impact Wrestling stars, one of them coming from WWE, one of them even trying in WWE, even talked about it in a promo. And then you have these two that are just now NWA, and I love the fact they're both there. Both can talk, both can wrestle, both incredible characters. Eli Drake, though, he has been kind of getting mixed vibes, per se. Talks about why he's there in the end of because there's real men. But, of course, it's all about the championship, 10 pounds of gold. And then talks about working your way up towards it, earning it, etc. And then you have Mr. Anderson, who basically fell off the grid. I don't even know what happened to him after he left Impact, and now he's in the NWA. I guess he was in championship wrestling, which I don't watch enough of. Sorry. There's too much wrestling, okay? I only have so much time. Anyway, uh... Now we have this grudge between Ken Anderson and Eli Drake after Eli Drake laid out Ken Anderson with the help of a freaking steel turnbuckle. Ouch! You know, it surprises me that Ken Anderson doesn't have a microphone, but I would love to see it, and I would love to see that come into play. Bottom line, whoever wins this is obviously going to be setting themselves up towards the 10 pounds of gold, the Real Rose Championship, the NWA Championship. Whoever holds in that match, we'll get to that shortly. With that being said, I am just going to simply say that... Because right now, I feel he's on fire. And he's pr probably one of the highest acquisitions of the NWA after he was turned free agent. I'm going to go with Eli Drake on this one. And this feud is sure to continue, but Eli Drake right now has had some momentum. Although I do wonder if Chris Adonis may come back into play, work under Eli Drake. Then again, am I a dummy? I don't know. 
You say no or yeah, I guess we'll find out soon enough. Bottom line, let me talk to you. I believe Eli Drake is the future of the NWA and will be a future contender for the NWA 10 pounds of gold, regardless of who the champ stands. And I believe on this pay-per-view, he's going to win. Simple as that. All right, with that being said, let's go back now into the other title matches. First off, tag title match. And it's a rematch, literally, as the Rock and Roll Express, two of the oldest wrestlers in tag team wrestling that I know of that are still going today, both as wrestlers and coaches. Unbelievable. Mad respect to them. Versus the former champs, the wild cards. One of them being the former brand, as you all will know. I'm sorry all their names elude me. I believe it was like Ricky Morton and the... the, the blah! I need to learn these guys better. So there's not much I can say on this. I just know that the tag titles were firmly held by Villain Enterprises after they won it back in the Crockett Cup, after winning the Crockett Cup, and then wild card, they won it since. Medusa has not been in play at all here either. Then again, she was with another team, and I'm still waiting to see what other teams are part of the NWA tag team division besides Homicide and uh, Eddie Kingston, who I'm sure will be next in-line challengers regardless of this outcome. Do I see face versus face or heel versus face here because those two are faces? I see Wildcard regaining the titles. They have their moment with Jim Cornette because Jim Cornette is no longer under the NWA. All the best to him. Due to reasons. And with that being said, I'm just going to say that we get a title change here. I believe that the Wildcard is going to get their titles back. Should be a good match though. After all, the freaking Ricky Morton can do a damn destroyer and suicide dive at his age. He's like 60-something. Unfreaking believable. Which leads us to our main event. The 10 pounds of gold, the current champ, the national treasure, Nick Aldis, versus the guy that will not shut up, but has got him everything to this point, James Storm, the former NWA national champion. He exposes basically what we have not seen from NWA power, including a number one contenders match that was just between Ken Anderson and Eli Drake, but he inserted himself in it, and then he won it, and then it was like thrown to the side, so it didn't matter. And then Nick Aldis, who is a guy that is never short on words, but doesn't believe in clickbait or conspiracy theories. Although the word conspiracy could be the one word you could think of right now to sum up season one of the NWA, surrounded by one person, I feel like. And we'll talk about that person in a moment. As far as this match goes, let me break it down for you. It's two out of three falls. Definitive. Conclusion. Simple as that. But each person got to pick their ref for their fall. James Storm picks Brian Hebner. And Nick Aldis picks the guy that he basically said, you got to be willing to put up everything even get a title chance against me. If you lose, you never get a title shot again. He lost, but he still claims, we made this together. We are both in WA. Don't let nobody get in your head. Tim Storm. We got two Storms in a match. It's kind of interesting. But I'm like, what? So here's the thing. Can I see this match going to a tiebreaker? And then the third fall. And then who's the ref in that fall? Who decides that? I don't know, but I also want to think about this too. The number one thing I've been most curious about and still trying to figure out in NWA, Camille, the brick house, the insurance policy. Where do you stand? When will you speak? What is your alliance? What did you say to James Storm? Why did you influence him losing the title? Why did you influence him being in this match? Why have you really been, per se, the focal point since being clotheslined by freaking Nick Aldis himself against the Tim Storm Championship match in the very first episode I might have had NWA Power. She is the number one reason right now, probably, that more people than anything else want to watch this show or this preview to see how does she play a factor. I don't care if Nick Aldis does say, I gave her the night off. She's clearly going to play a factor. Anyone with a blind monkey could see that. And it's for that reason that I feel like why he has carried it on his shoulder, why he has put it back on the map per se, and why he truly does feel that that title and him are one and the same, I feel like we are actually going to get a title change here. I feel like James Storm is going to pull it off somehow, some way, by hook or by crook. Something has to give here, folks. Okay? And think about this. The last line that Nick Aldis says, I will retain the gold and Camille will go back to simply being the insurance policy. You don't think that line's going to bite Nick Aldis in the ass? I think that line right there was the sign factor of not only Camille being the sign factor in this match, but also Nick Aldis finally losing the 10 pounds of gold since losing it to Cody back at 
freaking all in last year. Because he hasn't lost the title since. All right. James Storm, he has said everything. He has exposed everything he could. If he doesn't do it here, he might as well leave the NWA because there's nothing else for him at this point. I got to go with the cowboy James Storm here, especially after what Camille whispered to him. Again, Camille's going to be the signing factor. But I'm also very excited about the commentary set with Joe Galley and the former Bad News Wade Ballot, and also former worker, uh, I think Gerald Madger, also of WLS Wrestling back in the UK, Stu Bennett will be on commentary, making his commentary debut this pay-per-view. I'm sure he's going to have a lot to say. I'm sure he's going to bring us some bad news in his own way. But the bottom line is this. This is going to be a pay-per-view I feel like to remember and obviously set up everything to come in Season 2. More debuts, more feuds, new champions. Simple as that. Well, I think that's all I have to really say about this six-card uh, show. Surprisingly, six matches, but a lot to think about and talk about, especially because it's its first. And I love this internet-only-based series, and I look forward to its secondary series in the squared circle. By the way, I feel like NWA Power right now has one of the best fiends, and not the best fiend going in wrestling today with Duncan into the fire. If you haven't heard it, go hear it. With that being said, those are my simple thoughts, predictions, and analysis on NWA Into the Fire preview. I will be watching it live. I will be tweeting about it live. Let me know your thoughts, predictions down in the comments below. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and know when the next video goes live on this channel. And if you want to know more about me, know this. I'm just a simple man. And if you haven't figured out by now, I am a lifelong fan of wrestling. So if you want to follow me, talk anything from wrestling, I got Twitter, notyq.com, forward slash Nola. That's mostly where I rant, talk, assess, tweet, yell about wrestling in all its ways. I try to remain impartial, but even some stuff gets under my skin. And then, of course, my still YouTube channel here where you'll find all my content and eat our nice playlists. It's just simply wrestling. Predictions, analysis, stances, experimental series. There'll be new content to come in 2020. Maybe more stuff on wrestling. I might even start my own league on this channel and invite everybody. I haven't decided yet. There'll be an update video before the year's out, though, so stay tuned for that. And as always, I like to close because I like to keep it simple. Support your wrestling on big and small. Let's get growing this wrestling community together. Simple as that. With that being said, are you looking for an NWA Power Into the Fire? Have you watched NWA Power? Will you take a chance to watch it and catch up on the series? Is anybody from the NWA familiar to you or interests you? Please let me know. Let my friends, Christopher Mace, The Holiday, and West Coast Professor Jeff Meacham know too. They are huge huge followers in the NWA, way longer than this series became in existence. So they'll definitely tell you more too. I'm just learning, but I'm loving this. I learned about the NWA back at Crock Cup, been following it since. Though, to be fair, all in gave me a little bit of an idea of like, the title, but now I know much more about the promotion and greatly respect it. There's a lot more to wrestling than just a set, folks, and music. I'll just keep it like that. But anyway, until the next video, enjoy life, take care, enjoy wrestling. There's something out there for everybody, and there's more out there than ever. Come 2020, it's even going to become even crazier, I'm sure. But until the next video, take care, and enjoy your Friday night. And enjoy SmackDown if you choose to. And have a good night. Camille, please, speak for me! That's all I'm asking. Can I just get that? Can I just get that one thing from this pay-per-view? I don't know what the hell else might happen. I might get another debut. Can Camille just say something? Oh, I forgot to turn it off. Whoops. Bye.